and I am here today. My name is Sharima Bauer. I am here today. Thank you, Mr. Winfrey, for coming to talk with us today. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's our pleasure. Uh, let's just start with, with our question here. Why are you running for 6th Ward City Council, Mr. Winfrey? Well, actually, I'm running for re-election. Re okay. And the reason that I'm running is because uh, the preamble of our charter says that uh, all elected officials are responsible for ensuring that the citizens of Flint receive a government that embodies equality, freedom, justice, and an efficient government. I believe in that. That's what I've been doing for the last three and a half years. And um, I enjoy serving the people. I, I, I want to live a life of service. The council provides me the opportunity to do that. And um, I don't like to grade my own paper, but mm -hmm. I've tried my best to serve people the way I want to be served. And yeah. um, I'm, I'm ready. Our, our city is in, in, in what I believe to be a crisis, and we need people who are going to address issues. Yes based on the merits of that issue and not who's on the side of an issue. And I'm ready to do that. And I, I just want to continue to serve people. That's awesome. Well, that's an excellent segue to our next question. Right, what are some of your key issues of focus? My key issue of focus is now is the water. Okay. I mean, we, we've got to get this water correct. Yes. I, uh, when you look at it, it's almost like we're living in a third world mm -hmm. uh, country. Yes. There is no way in 2017 that mm -hmm. people in the city of Flint should have a their their main source of water yeah. be bottled water, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we've got to get that fixed. Uh, there are a uh, comedy of issues around that, and I really think that the administration and the legislative body needs to get a handle and, and work together and look at what is the underlying cause of where we are now and how we can move on and give the people what they what they deserve. And what do you think then makes you a qualified candidate? Well, what makes me a qualified candidate, again, is you go back to the preemblem. You go back to what it, it requires and it demands. I, I agree with that. I, I, don't, I think people should serve and try to make people's lives better. Yeah. That's, that's, that's good service to me. And what makes me qualified is my will to do that, my will to produce that. What also makes me qualified is that whenever constituents call me, they're going to get a call back. Not only will they get a call, depending on the issue, they're going to get a visit. I want to make sure that I move those resources from the city to the community as best as I can and as sufficiently and efficiently as I can. You know, it sounds like you have a really deep love of Flint. Uh, what do you love about Flint? Well, I love Flint. I love I love I love uh, I love people. Uh, Flint has been an interesting community to me for many of years. I remember when Flint was called the uh, I mean they had the the model, the national model for community education. Okay. When you look at uh, back in 19, I believe it was 37, when they had the sit-down strike. Now, I studied about that in college, mm -hmm. but I studied it in Arkansas. But to be here in Flint, Michigan, and see where the sit-down strike started, and to see people walking out on a strike and not being fired, I mean, that was mm -hmm. like culture shock to me. And then let's get to the sports. We've done the education. We've done the, the work. Let's, let's get to the sports. I've never seen a city its size produce so many uh, outstanding athletes. And, so, and then when you look at uh, the city government, I, was, I, I look at how uh, I think this was one of the, uh, uh, this is a community that had one of the first fair housing uh, issues to go nation nationwide and 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 had a really good uh, uh, result from it. Yes. And so Flint yes. has a real deep history, not just in the automotive, not just in the education, not in the athletic, but also socially. Mm. Yes, that deep history socially. And where do you do you fit in this socially? Why don't we, if you want to share a little bit with our viewers about your background? Well, my background Flint. is I'm a farmer. Okay. My granddad was a farmer. Uh, 
his dad was a farmer, my father was a farmer, but my father also realized that I got to do something else differently. So he learned how to weld, and then he learned how to uh, to do uh, uh, to manage people real well. So he worked for the school district there in Arkansas, and uh, his last 20 years he was an administrator. And so he had some good administrative skills. He always had a good work ethic. That's what he taught me to do. He taught me how to put a seed in the ground and, you know, treat the ground in a manner such that it would produce a wholesome crop. And uh, that's, I mean, that's where I got my work ethic from, from he and my mother. My mother was the same way. I mean, they were, they were, they both were farmers. They came from farm families. And uh, that's what we did. And we just, you know, your, your work, how you did your work would show up when the crops came up. Yeah. And so I, I use that terminology. I use that same will that, uh, uh, that my father and my mother had. And I try to make folks' lives better, including my families and mine as well. Oh, that's wonderful. Was that here in Flint? Or well, in the area? In Flint area? Well, no, it was in Arkansas. That was all. But I moved here in oh. the eight. In I came here in 1980. Okay. And I actually came here to visit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I came here to visit family and friends. Mm, never left. And uh, when my uncle picked me up at the airport, he says, "You know, it was December the 21st, 1980." He says, "You know, when people come here in the winter, they usually don't leave." I said, "Well, I'm going to break that tradition," and I've been here ever since. <laughs> I love I've that I've been story. here ever since. That's wonderful. Yeah. Well, that's a great story. That was 37 years ago. Yeah. This December 21st. That's right. <laughs> December 21st, 1980. It was actually it was snow on the ground. <laughs> and I never seen as much snow so much. Right. I mean to to, to right. just stay on the ground. Yeah. But right. but I enjoyed it. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Wow. And here you are now. Here I am now. That's that's an awesome awesome way to begin. What are some of your ideas for economic development for the city? Well, First of all, you know, there's a lot of things, there's a few things I should say that, that, that needs to happen before the economic development. Yeah. One is, again, the infrastructure. Yeah. We've got to get those 600 plus miles of pipes fixed. We've got to get this water source fixed. Yes. My, my belief yeah. is that we need a state of the art water treatment facility built from the ground up and we need to hire people who can operate it now, once that infrastructure is completed, then we got to let the people who who know how to market Flint, who know how to to come up with the ideas of what uh, this community can can uh, support, and what not just the community can support, but what uh, all the so resources that we can get, what they can support, and then we've got to talk about what's best for Flint. I think if we look at just one thing then we might be planning to fail. So I think we've got to look at a number of options of what could, what would be really good for Flint as it relates to economic development. And we've got to let the experts help us with that. Okay. I mean, the mm -hmm. feasibility studies, uh, okay. Mott Community College, I mean, Mott, uh, the Mott Foundation has been really good at uh, providing resources for different types of studies uh, around the world. Yeah. And I think, I think that we, we're at that stage now where we can, we can look at what would be a good economic development route for Flint to take. Do you have any ideas for a particular industry you have in mind or? I'm, I, you know, I'm not sure. You know, I know that we have a group of people here that are experienced mm -hmm. in manufacturing. But I don't think that that should be just the only thing that we should look at. Okay. It seems to me that we're going into, we're moving into a, a college type mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. and all the things that that means. I mean, when I look at Kettering and how I was talking with the uh, president of Kettering, Dr. McMahon, mm -hmm. here, oh, oh, it's been a little over a year ago now, and he was talking about how uh, companies around the world want to use their their uh, their new uh, facility for to test their products that's that's innovation yeah. so I think that with having one of the greatest uh, engineering schools mm -hmm. there should be something centered around that I mean education is always 
will never ever go away. So right. I, I think there's an array of things that we can we can look at and see what, what what's best for Flint. Yeah. But we've got to have those people who are good at that, and not everybody is. Right. So I'm willing to be at the table and listen, and and be amazed at some of the things that can come up. Uh, yeah. That they that those those thinkers, those those critical thinkers can come can, and marketers as well can come up with. Absolutely. Well, and this kind of also segues to my next question in terms of, you know, a couple of the key issues being public safety and blight mm -hmm. uh, yeah. in our city. We, you know, of course, uh, a drive through any area of our city, um, or many areas of our city may reveal, uh, you know, boarded up houses or, mm -hmm. or in, in empty lots where uh, houses were raised. Yes. Um, and so there's, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, what are some of your thoughts on this? And do you think that that is a barrier to new industry, or do you think that we can maybe incorporate it somehow and yes. bring it together? Well, my understanding of business characteristics, mm -hmm. they like coming to communities where you've got a wonderful school district or, or educational opportunities for kids. Right. They don't like coming to communities that are polarized, mm -hmm. and they don't like coming to communities or investing there are resources in communities that uh, that that ha that has a lot of crime. The crime rate's high. A community is what it accepts, and if a community accepts boarded up houses, high weeds, and and, and let me let me let me explain to you this this way. I travel throughout the Sixth Ward, and I see residents who don't own properties next to them, but they maintain them. Yes, I have seen the same. And what do you think would happen if a critical mass of people caught on to that type of behavior? Mm. It's not my property, but I'm gonna take care of it. There's a piece of property right in front of my house, and it's it, there's no there, there are no houses on my street, and, and I live on Mott Park. And sometimes when uh, there, there are folks who, who mow Mott Park. Yes. But st I don't wait on them to mow the, the, the stuff in front of my house. I, once I get done mowing mine, I'll go out and, and mow that one. That's and awesome. sometimes they'll wave and, and, and thank mm -hmm. me. But, it, but, but I think mm -hmm. that's the strength of a community. That's right. And what we accept, it's, it's what will happen. Mm -hmm. So we can look at. Well, the city can do this, and the city can. But as a as a homeowner, I'm responsible for my house, and if there's a vacant house next to me, that house as well. Now, that's my opinion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Other folks may not feel that way. Uh, there are uh, neighborhood associations that will act that have groups of people that actually go and board up houses in their community, and these are the kinds of things that keep a community uh, stable. Yes. And so if you had that kind of activity going on, because you've got a lot of people that don't care where they dump yeah. or th what house they trash. Mm -hmm. And so there's just got to be a changing of the mindsets. And I don't know how or oh, the best way that that can be done, but it ne there needs to be a, in my opinion, a way that I, I think the mayor had a, a, a cleanup just mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. Yes. Those, are, those are things that I think that can really encourage people to do things differently. Thank you very much, Mr. Winfrey. And now in the final moment of our interview, if you can please just share with us, and uh, with the viewers, uh, exactly what you would like them to know. Well, again, my name is, is Herbert Winfrey, Councilman Herbert Winfrey. I've been serving for the last two and a half years, uh, going on three years now. And uh, I always say to people this way, I'm really not a good politician, I'm a worker. And for those individuals who live in the Sixth Ward, if you feel that I've served you in the manner in which you deserve to be served, then I'll ask you to support my candidacy. I think it would be unfair for me to ask you to support me if you don't feel that I've done a good job. My, my aim was to do a good job. I, that was the things that I woke up with, to, to do a good job and to serve the people of the city of Flint and to serve the people in the Sixth Ward. On August the 8th, my name will be on that ballot. And again, if you feel that I've served you in a manner that you're pleased with, then I'll ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so your close is at that camera. All right. And you'll say, this is Rima Bauer. There'll be more Meet the Candidates after this.
All right. And this has been an interview with Councilman Herbert Winfrey, and my name is Sharima Bauer. This is Meet the Candidates, and there will be more interviews to follow. Stay tuned. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.